The Machiavelli we'll meet here is probably very different from the one you're used to. Imagine your friend telling you about an awful colleague at work, but when you meet them, they're actually quite nice. In Machiavelli's book The Discourses on Livy, he wants to uncover the sources of Rome's greatness. It's a Republican text, but Machiavelli isn't a traditional classical Republican, nor is he doing a straightforward history of Rome. He selectively appropriates elements of Rome that he admired. He also condenses his writing into short lessons which jump between ancient and modern examples. His intention is not only to create a vision of what Rome was, but rather to guide us in what a future republic could become. Unlike most classical republicans, Machiavelli argued for the benefits of class conflict and praised the empowerment of the popular classes. In this video, we'll see that Machiavelli put his faith in the common people to continue the legacy of a well-founded republican regime. I'm James Muldoon, I'm a lecturer in political science at the University of Exeter. If you're interested in more of an introduction to Machiavelli or an analysis of The Prince or a deeper analysis of all his writings, check out my other videos. This is an introduction to the discourses on Livy. Aims of the book. The discourses appear to be a commentary on the first 10 books of Livy's History of Rome. The text is divided into three quite long books, Founding a Free State, Expanding a State, and Questions of Political Leadership and Renewing a Republic. But to put it like that gives it a false sense of coherence that it doesn't really have. Individual chapters jump around quite a lot and it can be hard to follow a single line of argument in the text. It's like listening to a friend telling you a story of their night out and they kind of jump between different episodes of what happened. Machiavelli follows a humanist tradition of telling history in a way that teaches a moral in each story. One way of reading the text is to focus on each chapter as telling some kind of lesson that can connect to others in a larger constellation of ideas. The book is evidently very different from Machiavelli's The Prince. The main political subject of The Prince is a military leader capable of leading an army and creating a strong and unified Italy. When the subject of the people are mentioned in The Prince, it's usually as passive onlookers who are in some way manipulated or changed by the prince or other leaders. But in the discourses, it's the people rather than the prince who are the most important subjects of the book. There is an important role for a single person, both in founding a regime and returning it to its sources, but ultimately it's the people who are responsible for maintaining liberty in a republican regime. Rome and Republicanism By writing a text on Rome and its institutions, Machiavelli is continuing a tradition of republicanism and civic humanism. This tradition is based on the Roman Republic and on writers such as Cicero, Livy, and Plutarch. Historians of republicanism talk about an Atlantic Republican tradition that can be traced from Rome through the Italian city-states and into the 18th century republics such as America, France, and the Netherlands. During the Renaissance, classic republicanism was revived in certain Italian city-states. These cities include Venice, Genoa, and Florence, and were usually governed by a small merchant class. As early modern republicans draw a lot from ancient sources, Machiavelli is therefore an important transition writer between the ancient and modern worlds. Writers such as James Harrington during the English Civil War, Rousseau before the French Revolution, and the American Founding Fathers draw a lot from Machiavelli in his reading of the republican tradition. Republicans are united by a concern for cultivating civic virtue among citizens and orienting them towards the common good. They believe that the rule of law and well-ordered republican institutions were the best defense of liberty. City-states should be free from the domination of foreign powers and should, to some extent, be governed by the people themselves. One of the main fears of republicans is that citizens could lose their disposition to act towards the common good and could start to become more interested in their own private lives. Republicans also tended to emphasize patriarchal values, military service, and strength and bravery on the battlefield. Machiavelli's text continues many of these aspects of the republican tradition. The Dedication Machiavelli opens the book by describing that it's based on his long experience in politics and his reading of ancient history. The difference between the dedication here and the prince is that while in the prince he dedicated it to a would-be ruler, here he dedicates it to his friends. He implicitly seems to regret dedicating the prince to Lorenzo Medici in the hope of finding employment with the family. If this were an 80s American film, this would be the point at which Machiavelli realises it was wrong of him to try and hang out with the cool kids and ditch his old friends. The Founding of Rome The secret to Rome's greatness for Machiavelli was that it started out being founded as a free city rather than being ruled by a foreign power. 
What mattered was not how much money it had or how many territories it conquered, but the fact that it was based on the civic virtue of its citizens. It also benefited from being founded as what Republican writers call a mixed constitution. This is a government that combines elements of a monarchy, aristocracy and democracy to avoid the pitfalls of the pure type of any single regime. Machiavelli gives the example of Athens and Sparta. Machiavelli thinks that Athens was a pure democracy which lasted for only a hundred years, while Sparta he describes as a mixed constitution which lasted a lot longer. The key to new foundations is the establishment of good laws with good institutions that will be able to socialise citizens with a high degree of civic virtue. The main question of the book for Machiavelli is how did Rome begin with such virtuous citizens and how did it maintain this virtue over time? One of his main lessons is that in terms of founding new states, it's going to be a single individual rather than the masses which is the most appropriate subject. He also thinks that if a city loses its virtue, it's going to be a single person that will be best placed to put it back on the right track. It's like if you ever book a restaurant or a holiday with a large group of people. Sometimes it's better if you just let a single person do the actual organising. But for a city to grow and prosper, it's going to require the virtue of the citizenry as a whole. The danger is when citizens start promoting their own interests or factional loyalties over the common good. As well as the coercive power of the law, Machiavelli also sees a strong role for a civic religion in encouraging people to follow the laws of the state. A civic religion is important because a God-fearing community is going to be more obedient and be more likely to follow the laws. But he thinks that the ancient religion of the Romans was superior to Christianity because it glorified strength and power rather than being meek and humble. Machiavelli was a really strong critic of Christianity because it prioritised the immortality of the soul over any concern with worldly and political matters. Class Conflict One of Machiavelli's secrets for a strong republic was to frame institutions in such a way that allowed all social classes to participate in government. He thought that it would be important to maintain a balance between rich and poor so that the lower classes felt included and so that they'd be able to curb the ambitions of the rich to dominate the city. Rather than setting up a harmony and stability between the social classes, Machiavelli thought that it would be a constant conflict and tension that would be the most conducive to allowing for liberty to flourish in the city. Machiavelli's praise for the benefits of conflict went against the Republican tradition, but he thought that it was Rome's empowering of the lower classes and allowing them to be armed and fight for the city that was one of the keys to its greatness. He also thought that citizens should be able to publicly indict officials and other private citizens if they acted in such a way that was against the interests of the Republic. He thought that this would keep officials in check for fear of being prosecuted, but it would also allow an outlet for people to vent against a single individual without this anger being directed against the Republic as a whole. So if there was a single politician you didn't like, citizens would be able to banish them from the Republic without thinking that the whole system was necessarily corrupt or not worth saving. It could act like a safety valve on very tumultuous forms of politics. Machiavelli had a particular dislike for the patrician class and appreciated the values and the trustworthiness of the common people. He considered wealthy individuals to be one of the greatest internal threats to the health and stability of a republic. He also said that when the lower classes are united and organised, they're both more virtuous and more trustworthy than a prince. He consciously argues against the mainstream view at the time that common people couldn't be trusted with political power. Military Expansion The second book of the Discourses is about how Rome expanded its borders through military conquest. This might appear strange because classical republicans imagined a bounded political community within the confines of a single city-state. Machiavelli takes a different approach. He thinks that the only way to maintain a free republic is to pursue an aggressive policy of military expansion. He thinks that rival states will be in constant competition with each other, and the best way is to meet any potential threat before it arises. But is there a contradiction here? Machiavelli praises free cities, but seems to think that the best way for a republic to exist Exist, is to expand and dominate its neighbours. Well he's definitely more concerned in this text about the Republic in question rather than the fate of its neighbours. And he's not a cosmopolitan so he doesn't think it's going to be possible for a series of republics to live in relative peace and harmony alongside each other. What follows from his power politics worldview is that the best defence is often a little offence. 
So what should a state do to pursue expansion? Well, historians such as Plutarch and Livy thought that Rome actually benefited a lot from luck rather than necessarily its own virtue. Machiavelli challenges this. He thinks that Rome actually had a great foreign policy that allowed for its military expansion. He points to two things in particular. The first is to allow a lot of immigrants into your state. The more free citizens you have, the more soldiers you'll be able to call upon in warfare. Second, he doesn't think it's all about war and conquering. Forming alliances with your close neighbours is also important, particularly if you remain the dominant power in the alliance. Machiavelli also has lots of advice for military leaders, such as not relying on fortresses, fighting big but short wars with your rivals, and defeating your enemies in open battle. In each case, he thinks that republics should engage their opponents from a position of strength and at the least cost to the republic. If a future republic were to follow this advice, Machiavelli thinks that it would find great success in a policy of military expansion. Renewing a republic. Machiavelli thought about political society through the metaphor of a body that could decay over time. He was keenly aware of the finitude of human activities and the fact that any political organisation could face internal and external challenges. One way he thought a republic could regenerate was by returning to its original principles. What this means is a matter of debate. What he does say is that every 10 years or so, a republic should return to its original principles, to its initial constitution, in order to rejuvenate itself. One example of how this rejuvenation might occur is through the example of a heroic leader, who through their own good example will start to set a new precedent for citizens to follow. Machiavelli thought that if Rome had one such leader every decade, that it wouldn't have become corrupted. He also advises that republics should be adapted adaptable and should learn to suit the spirit of the times, just like he advises princes in The Prince. Ultimately, no matter what it does, a republic is going to be faced with periodic shocks and crises. He thought that it would be better if these came internally from the new laws and examples of a leader rather than through external military forces that might threaten the very existence of a republic. The idea of returning to original principles inspired many constitutional thinkers in the republican tradition to think about the example of a fundamental law. This constitutional law would play a fundamental role in preserving a republic through various stages of change. In the Discourses on Livia, Machiavelli offers a particular interpretation of the classical republican tradition that attempts to guide us towards new ways in which we can institute class conflict and the empowerment of the popular classes in contemporary republican institutions. If you're interested in more in-depth debates about interpreting Machiavelli, check out my other video, and don't forget to subscribe for more political philosophy.